So we know the future is EV. There's no doubt about it. The future is EV. Five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years down the line, 90% of all vehicles are going to be EV on the road. I don't care what anybody says. This is going to be a fact. And there's some stunning data that's coming out that will make you a believer in it if you guys aren't a believer. And I think this is such an important chart to go over, some important data to go over, because if you're a Tesla long-term investor, you will see how, you'll see how this will play out nicely and how Tesla's gonna benefit greatly. And I'll, I'll have my point of view at the end of the video, but I do wanna go through these charts the charts so guys smash that like button hit subscribe if you haven't already and let's get down to it check out this chart this is norway and norway at the moment has reached pretty much a hundred not 100 percent yet but they're at 90 percent evs in that country it's insane looking at the chart you could see the s curves and the down s curves you could see the ice vehicles are fallen ev vehicles keep going higher and higher and the interesting part here is the hybrids at one point hybrids do go sell does sell more than evs but then it tapers off once everybody figures out and knows that oh well, evs are so much better and hybrids are just pretty much ice vehicles and the same maintenance that you need on a ice vehicle you need to have it on a hybrid which defeats the purpose of you know having an ev in the first place <laughs> so looking at this chart this is what we can expect for every single country out there. And I want to give a big shout out to Le Rafael. He does these amazing charts. I do recommend everyone to follow him. He has some awesome, awesome charts and data. And you know me, I love to look at flipping data, which is a sheesh moment. But just look at that chart, man. This is such an amazing chart because this is something that we're going to see pretty much in every single market. I don't see hybrids panning out. I just don't see hybrids beating EVs in the future. It just, the economics, the, the practicability of it just doesn't make any sense. If you're going to go hybrid, I would say, okay, if someone wants to go EV, they will try hybrid. They will see some benefits. Then they will realize that, wait a minute, why, you know, gas is so expensive. I have to go for maintenance. I have to go for oil changes. For an EV, it doesn't have any of that. So why not just get an EV? And here's the thing, who has the most compelling EV on the market and who will always have the compelling EV in the market? <clears throat> Starts with a T, ends with an A. No, not Toyota, Tesla. Any other car company that's making an EV, they're just not as compelling and they keep breaking down and they're not profitable. So, and it's crazy to me that we're still here about to hit 2025 and the profitable company that's making EVs that are profitable is still Tesla. Yeah, you got BYDs and stuff like that, but it's, it's, it's crazy to me. And yes, in the future, if Europe and North America does allow Chinese EVs in to the country, that is the, that is the death to all legacy automakers, all gas automakers, all ICE and OEMs. That's it. It's finished. All you're going to see is Chinese EVs and then Tesla. That's it. That's it. Which is why Tesla, they only have four brand. Well, with the Cybertruck, five, five models of vehicles, only five vehicles and it sounds like crazy and all three of them well let's say model y model y is the best selling vehicle in the world but in the us all the top best three selling vehicles is model y model 3 and the cybertruck can you guys believe that all flipping evs and and a, and a company that only makes five models imagine what's going to happen once the cyber cab is out and nobody needs to really buy a car because that's going to be so much cheaper than transportation dude this chart you see here the ev the green part is going to be it's going to be insane but let's look at other countries, all right? Let's look at other countries because he does these analysis and they're flipping awesome. Let's take a look at China because China is, you know, going crazy with their EVs. BYD is there, Tesla is there, and we can already see the chart panning out very similar to Norway's. ICE vehicles crashing down, not even dipping down, crashing down. And he has it here in 2025, 44% with new ICE vehicles and hybrid EVs, 2026, 30%, 2027, 17, eight and a half, three in 2029 and 2030 projected to be less than 1%. You can see EVs soaring up. You can also see hybrids soaring up, but we know as we saw that chart for Norway, as soon as we see this green, the EVs go past 50%, we're gonna see hybrids crash back down and EVs will go all the way up to the hundreds. And he's, he's thinking that by end of the 2030s, which makes sense, which is realistic. I think it's going to be sooner than that, especially when the cyber cab is coming out. $25,000 vehicles. Oh my God. And you don't need to buy vehicles anymore. And it's crazy because this cyber cab vehicle is pretty much ending all the other vehicles. Because if you can get around town spending 
20 cents per mile 24 7 in a day oh my god you don't need to drive anymore you just get in the car the thing will drive you you can sleep you can play games cheaper and you the headache of you owning a car having insurance thinking about it if, if it gets scratched or not you don't you don't get that anymore and the thing is going to be fast cyber cyber cab is going to be fast it's going to be like uber times 10 like in terms of fastness and services it's going to be absolutely insane that's going to increase the ev adoption so fast and it's it's a brilliant move from flipping tesla like hey we don't need to have 100 models we just need some models that can drive themselves and we need a dedicated robo taxi that can do all the heavy lifting for us and hey we're not going to do it the people are going to do it because people can buy a whole fleet of them companies can buy a whole fleet of them taxi companies can buy a whole fleet of them uber and lyft if they want to be part of if they still want to be relevant they buy a whole fleet of them and they just let the robot taxi do and make them money it's crazy let's look at germany and it's the same flipping story the only difference is, is that hybrid is more popular in germany but evs hasn't even reached 30 percent yet and again once that reaches 50 percent, we're going to see a big crash in hybrids just like how we see it look look at the cliff look at that cliff like in 2021 it was all right and then in 2022 just crashed down that's very scary if i'm an oem if i'm an ice company if i'm like volkswagen and toyota and all those other guys and look at this and go like oh my god we gotta flip and make evs as soon as possible and make them profitable otherwise we're out we're finished but how are we gonna make them profitable <laughs> that's that's the crazy part so you guys can see it's insane it's insane and again this is gonna happen in almost every country in almost every country it's happening in canada it's happening in, in germany as you see here and china is a big example norway is the biggest and the greatest example it's a sheesh moment it's insane and you don't want to bet against this here's another chart from la rafael in china ev new registrations he's projected that by january of 2032 over 90 percent of vehicles will be evs and you can see this s curve going up now i do think with affordable more vehicles with an economy getting better i know in china the economy is not the best but they are giving zero percent interest rates and new affordable models are going to come in the first half of 2025 so you can already imagine for a year or two we're going to see a much higher spike so maybe we can even bring this forward to 2030 which is practically 80 percent as well i mean this is going based on data and I love it. I love data. I love to make my predictions on data. And again, this is going to be in, in every country, in every major country. Now, obviously, we got India and all those other countries that Tesla hasn't um, entered yet because there's a lot of corruption, all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of markets that Tesla hasn't entered yet. I think over 195 countries, Tesla is only available in 46. And I'm not too sure why Tesla didn't enter any countries this year. It's crazy to me that they have, they're only available in 26% of all countries but yet have the best-selling vehicles in the world. Imagine once they're available in every country. It's going to be insane, dude. It's going to be crazy. But whether they enter or not, this is where the world is heading in, and it's going to be, a, it's going to be an electrifying future for sure. Now, here's the thing. These charts are amazing. They're really good eye-openers, and they're stunning data to know what's happening with this EV stuff, why EVs are the future. But here's how Tesla can accelerate it even further, how Tesla can make this even faster. And this comes down to the genius of Elon pushing for the robo taxi. He said in Q3 earnings call, volume production could hit two to four million. Well, two million, some are saying four, but let's just go with two, let's just go with two million, right? Two million cyber cabs at $25,000 each, which will be available in North America, China, and eventually Europe as well. I just don't see why it wouldn't be in other markets, but let's just assume these markets. Do you not think that EVs are going to spike so fast that you can get a dedicated vehicle for 25,000 vehicles, now you can have it for yourself. You can drive you autonomously everywhere if you want to have, if you want to have that luxury. But you can get this vehicle for 25,000 and treat it as an Uber and Lyft and allow you to make you money passively. I mean, it'll be a business. I'm sure there's a lot of things that you got to do as well. But for the most part, it can make you money and 80% cheaper than actual transportation. This, this is, again, as I mentioned earlier in this video and a lot of my videos, this is gonna kill vehicle sales for any other company because why would I wanna buy a vehicle now? Why would I wanna go through the headache of purchasing the vehicle, getting a finance or lease on it, and then maintain it, and then put charger gas in it, and then you know make sure it doesn't get hit make sure it doesn't do this, make sure that doesn't happen to that. It just eliminates the need of you having a car. So when we enter a future like that, when we enter a situation like that, where people don't have to buy vehicles anymore and they can just rely on the cyber cab, the only conclusion this comes 
is Tesla's going to make a whole bunch of money by selling a whole lot of autonomous cars. That's one. Two, other companies have to have this software. Otherwise, they're not going to survive. So Tesla will become a supplier to them if they want to license out the software. And three, no one's going to be owning cars anymore in the future. And if you are owning a car, it's an autonomous car, whether you can use it for yourself or to make money. But for the majority of the people, it doesn't make sense to buy the vehicle when transportation is cheaper than a public bus. Man, that is crazy. And that is how the future is going to be 100% EVs. It's already happening in Norway with just regular cars, but with the cyber cab and the robo taxis, man, it's game over. It's over. It's finished. It's done. I don't care what anybody says. This is why you should never bet against Elon Musk or even Tesla, man. It's just their thinking is insane. And the fact that other competitors, they can't match this. But I want to share this data with you guys, the stunning data of how the futures are EVs and how Tesla's going to pretty much win majority of it when the cyber cab is out. 25,000, pretty much eliminating, in my opinion. I mean, that's just my opinion. I think this is what's, that's what's going to happen. Car sales car ownership in the future. I think we are heading this path 100%. A world where you don't need to even have a driver's license to drive anymore, which is in flipping saying. Now, the stock has gone up like 26% last week. And people are saying, is it too late to buy the stock? Is it not too late to buy the stock? Well, I've already, I've made a video about it right here. You guys can check out if it's too late or not. Spoiler alert, of course it's not, but the data here is absolutely crazy. Check it out. You won't be in, you won't be disappointed for sure. Subscribe guys, get your about the dip t-shirt and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.